What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the second episode of our Remembering the Prequel Trilogy uh, videos. Uh, we have an invader, a space invader, cannibal. <laughs> this is my cat. <laughs> <laughs> what planet is he from? Uh, <laughs> He's a Thordarian. <laughs> Thord you know. Uh, so joining me is my esteemed colleague, Pag Guy, who looks completely different in this video. Listen, this is what's called a time jump, a 10-year time jump between episode one and episode two. <laughs> Except I've regressed. I've gone from Ewan McGregor in episode two to Ewan McGregor in episode, in episode one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Which might be a good thing, because that means I'm better at lightsaber fighting now. Oh. Dude, we'll get into that <laughs> uh but what we're what we're gonna do is very similar to what we did with the sequel trilogy and what we did with the first episode of the uh for the phantom menace uh we're gonna reminisce about attack of the clones you might have some more positive things to say than i will because as a star wars movie i can accept attack of the clones but as an actual movie itself it is fucking terrible <laughs> oh, shit guns blazing <laughs> I don't think Attack of the Clones is an atrocious film. I think it is a very flawed film, uh, but I do think it's like, compared to a lot of other movies, it's not awful. There's a lot of bad parts, but I think, you know, I think it gets, I'm going to say it, it gets a little too much hate. I don't think Attack of the Clones, <laughs> I, I don't think it's great, but I definitely don't think it's like the worst thing I've ever seen either. Um, we'll get into the negatives and the positives, but uh attack of the clones like i was talking about in the last episode i actually prefer to phantom menace I do. um for a variety of reasons which we'll get into i definitely i definitely think this is probably where the prequel trilogy should have started yeah i mean i've always kind of thought uh episode one and episode two both kind of feel like you know kind of strange preludes to like the actual story which is yeah. kind of like what episode three is so i kind of wish episode three's general broad strokes had been stretched out into like a whole trilogy. it should have been but yeah. episode two i mean i get why george started the way he did like that far back like discovering anakin was a big deal i guess but i don't know yeah yeah and, unfortunately I, attack of the clones gets kind of like the middle problem that a lot of middle movies and trilogies do where it's just guiding you to what's to come by being like oh yeah we need them to fall in love and we need this to happen we need the war to happen yeah. so we build that up when we could have honestly george we could have just jumped head first into the clone wars to begin with we could have been like it's the clone wars <laughs> it's happening right now war! <laughs> war! the dead speak <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean i okay the thing the one positive i have well there might be like a couple positives for this movie that i have but the one thing I, the one thing i will say about attack of the clones is it at least has somewhat more of a plot but even then the plot just i don't know what it is for me man like like i love the stuff on camino i love the separatist stuff on geonosis i love how it's like Probably oh the Pat lesser yeah <laughs> 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 and then I, I love like too how like it's like oh like we're still kind of like doing like the political stuff but not as much of it it's like oh we're trying to assassinate Padme Amidala here uh, that's at least more exciting than trade routes right exactly, like an assassination yeah. attempt is something <laughs> yeah, exactly but like but there's just so many things in this movie to me that like the ideas are there but the execution for them just doesn't make sense I mean, I, I, I like, agree. Um, I think what we, we talked about last time, the execution of the prequels is the biggest issue. Like, yeah. there's a lot of great concepts. But, yeah. I mean, definitely, I will admit straight up, as much as I might defend parts of this movie right here, I will meet you here in this agreement that the love story could have been handled better. Yes? <laughs> this, okay, th that but, is the biggest reason why I hate this less or but, but less I, more than Phantom Menace. I can't hate it completely, though, because here's the saving grace of the love story. Across the stars. John Williams is like, you know what? I'm going to make this work. You're going to feel like they're in love because I'm going to kill I you with this the problem amazing is, like, theme. I feel like they're in love when they get married, but for the rest of the movie, when it's like, you're making fun of me. No, but then Annie, and she's like, you know what? Like, just go. Don't talk to me like that, Annie. He's like, sorry, my lady. Yeah, I don't like it when you look at me that way. Why? <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> or like, because just, this I movie, mean, this movie is just super like stalker boyfriend, like serial killer vibes. 
You know, like Listen, I feel okay, like he's he, going to kill her. He's gonna be a future mass murderer of children, so maybe this is a this is how he would flirt. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then and then like, wouldn't you think Obi Wan would like send something where it's like maybe he's gonna fall in love with this girl because at the beginning of the movie he tells Obi Wan he's like I haven't seen her in ten years. He's like obviously think he's about. been thinking about her for ten years. I know. I think here's the thing. I think Obi Wan knows. That Anna, obviously that Anna keeps in love with her, yeah. but like I think this is part of a test, you know. Like, will he actually act on those feelings? Well, let's find out. Because Obi Wan seems hesitant about like, oh, sending him on this. To, like, are we sure? I told him to like, stay on that boo. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, like that's the love story is I think what gets harped on the most, and a lot of it I will agree with. The dialogue George Lucas in this and in episode three does not know how to write romantic. Just, not I even truly, romantic. They should deeply, just be having normal conversations sometimes. I truly, <laughs> deeply love you. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not a strength. And the thing is, the 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 you, there's something that could be there. You're in a beautiful location. You're you're on this villa on the lake, and it's gorgeous. And she's in this dress, and it's beautiful. Yeah, and I'm like, but that, amazing. But that's, but that's the thing, though. Like, if there's if there's like. If there's like a, an assassination attempt on you and there's bounty hunters from all across the galaxy trying to kill you, wouldn't you think that being in like, I mean, I get it's secluded, but wouldn't you think being like out in the open in front of a waterfall would be like, you're making fun of <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have a whole galaxy to like hide, but they're like, oh, I know the safest place, her home planet. She definitely, yeah. they're not going to look for <laughs> I know, there. right? I can well, go back to the I'll be safe there. Maybe they won't, because apparently no one ever looked for, or, you know, Vader never went back to Tatooine, so maybe. You know. <laughs> yeah, and, and apparently, and apparently Palpatine never went back to Naboo. <laughs> I just, I mean, <clears throat> it's just, the, the problem is the writing of the love story. And you the, know what the, else? Yeah. You know yeah. what else it is too? Sorry. <clears throat> God no, right. damn it. I'm already losing my voice. Uh, <laughs> you know what else it is too? It's like, it's, it's some, it's the dialogue when she's like, no, we can't date you. But then she's like, she's, she's just like asking for it though. She like, oh my God. Outfit. No, Alex, no. <laughs> <laughs> just because she's wearing something slightly revealing does not mean she's asking for it. God, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, but don't be wearing but- that shit if you don't want to date the guy. I would say don't take Anakin to the most romantic places. You're sending mixed signals. It's like, let's go hang out by the balcony on this beautiful Dude, lake. Like, let's go on a picnic <laughs> and let's go sit sit on the couch by the fire. Like, like, like why are you hanging out in these romantic the, places? Here's, here's one of the creepiest parts. After he's like, I don't like sand. It's rough and irritating. She's just looking at him and he's looking at her and then He's just slowly like stroking her arm, and soft and smooth, or whatever he <laughs> says. <laughs> I'm like, listen, okay, Anakin. Maybe it's intentional. Maybe he's supposed to be shit at romance because he's like a monk. You know, he's like a, he's like he was raised as a slave. The Jedi are not allowed to monk. date. <laughs> yeah, which is like, I don't know. It seems like it's gonna cause friction with most Jedi, but. They got their weird I rules. I think that that was the point that was supposed to come across, but it never came across like that in the movie. I don't know. Like, I mean, there are moments where you can feel that, like, the forbidden love that they're trying to go for. Because the idea of this, like, forbidden love is a very Shakespearean romantic concept. Like, we're, yeah. we're going to fall in love, but we can't let them know. And you're a senator. Or you're a Jedi, and I'm a senator. <laughs> I'm like, what does that have to do? Do senators not get married? Like, that's don't act like it's the same thing, Padme. He's sworn to celibacy. <laughs> He's part of the Night's Watch, goddamn. I know, right? I'm a senator. I'm like, what? Don't worry, we have R2 her, with us. Her public image? I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. is, I think if you had, like we talked about before, if you had started Anakin off older in episode one, you would have had more time to develop this romantic aspect. Yeah, yeah. Where it's hard to do that when he's a nine-year-old kid going, yippee! <laughs> now this is pod racing. Yeah, it's hard to do that then. If you had, you could have had more time to do that in episode one. Yeah, and it's like, you can tell in episode one that he's immediately like infatuated with her. So like, yeah. so yeah, I, guess, I, guess, him I, guess, I guess you could use that in episode one's defense, but it's like at the same time, he's also nine years old probably like the right. first girl he ever saw you're not gonna have serious romantic development with a nine-year-old like that'd be creepy as fuck so they had to wait and age him up until now he's no longer jake lloyd and now he's hayden christensen who yeah. is another issue with the movie unfortunately i don't blame hayden tell us now 
I don't lip Hayden. quiver. Oh. I don't blame Hayden. Okay, I talked about it last time. Yeah. I think George Lucas was not great at getting great performances out of people. Yeah. Ewan McGregor was the exception. But um, I, I don't know. Have you seen that old Goosebumps episode with Hayden and Christensen, though? Yes, I have. Night of the Living Dummy 3. Yes, I have. I know he's, he's not terrible good, in that, but though. he's also a child. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he was great in Jumper. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen hayden gets too much fucking hate does, okay which does. is why which is why i'm happy when he went to celebration a couple years ago he got a fucking standing ovation and if i was there i would have given him a standing ovation too he's anakin skywalker show him some <laughs> no, respect. it would have been everybody giving him a standing ovation and then he had that one dick like malfoy like the slytherins get up and then he's like sit down <laughs> but no hayden i mean the problem is anakin is written as a petulant, annoying, angsty teenage asshole who literally the first scene of the movie, he's like, why? Why shouldn't we help her, master? Why? I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> dude, you, <laughs> immediately. Any, you can take a shot anytime Anakin says master in this movie. You'll get drunk. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, like, that's the thing. is he, Anakin's character is written so... And he's and he's not supposed to be because the intent from George Lucas was to make him come across as like uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, fuck, likable. <laughs> well, yeah, likable, but like kind of like I don't know. I guess I guess I would say like Qui Gon, like stern or concerned, but or I guess angsty, but he confuses that with like whininess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is like. <laughs> Like, you could have him, you know, not be that way and have him be, like, super happy-go-lucky, like a swashbuckling hero. And then when he becomes Vader, it's like a big, like, oh, shit, he's completely different now. Yeah. But more realistically, he probably would be a kid with issues. Like, I mean, the eventually... kid was like slavery, for Christ's sake. Right. Like, I, I can understand him having issues. It's just, it comes off more as just whiny and annoying yeah. than, like, tragic, you know? <gasps> Obi-Wan's jealous! He's holding me back! <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Hayden's performance was wooden. It was definitely wooden in some parts. There are some parts where I think he does okay. When he's on the picnic and he acts like he got hurt by that when, when it, when it looks <laughs> When it looks like he's having the absolute time of his life. Like, in the speeder chase, I think he's really good in the speeder chase. Where he's, like, where he's, like, uh, where he's, like, flying like straight down and obi-wan's like gotta get pull up and you just see him go <laughs> like i'm like he's having the time of his life like i feel like that is something anakin would do and i think he's great when he's in scenes like when his mom dies at the, oh, after yeah, she good. dies at that moment when he looks up is intense i'm yeah. like i feel like he's a murderer right then it's sure enough well he i mean kills, he goes outside and kills men, sand people but the women and the children too i hate them man, <laughs> holy shit but like see like it could have been better if he did, Lars. If, if somebody didn't la- allow him to do the lip quiver it would have been better because he's like uh, i hate them <laughs> but who was he please tell us tell us now <laughs> classic that uh, should be quoted more uh, that's a classic prequel moment <laughs> but then yeah okay. Anakin's an issue throughout the, the we talked about last time if they had done what Clone Wars did and more equally balanced the heroic side of Anakin Skywalker and the tragic darker yeah. side of him where it comes out sometimes but a lot of the time he's a likable guy like, like it should have been it should have been people like him doing something like the Jedi don't do and then like maybe like a Jedi sees it or something or Obi-Wan sees it and they question him and be like why did you do that yeah right it should have been it shouldn't have been what it was and it is an issue and it is an issue with this movie but it is what it is can we just (laughs) talk about the jedi again in this movie where it's like yeah there's an assassination (laughs) attempt on padme and then the separatist is the separatist uh movement it's like all right obi-wan go uh, investigate that anakin you go with uh you go with Padme. I, every time I watch it, I'm sitting there thinking, why don't you fucking idiots go yourselves? <laughs> like you <laughs> sat on your asses for the whole first movie. You sat on, you sit on your ass for the entire first half of this movie. <laughs> They're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, here's the thing. Episode two, the love story, Anakin, that's all a bit rough. Okay. It's a bit rough, but uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, 
And everything he does in this movie is pretty amazing. Except lightsaber fighting. He is on a noir mystery throughout this whole movie. I have a He's problem. off on his own, investigating, finding evidence, talking to surly contacts in a diner. Like, <laughs> I have, investigating I have some a, more. I have a problem with the Camino <laughs> stuff. You know okay, but before we get to Camino, we first got to talk about how we get to Camino. Yeah, and that is well, well, we got to talk about we got to talk about Dex. the beginning. We, we got to talk about the beginning because the beginning is like it, there's an assassination attempt on Padme. Her decoy is killed, and then there's another assassination attempt. So you find out that Django Fett is hired to assassinate Padme, but because he's the worst bounty hunter in the galaxy, he hires another bounty hunter named <laughs> Sam Wessel to do it. But even she's a bad bounty hunter because you would think if you're if you're gonna kill somebody or attempt to assassinate somebody while they're sleeping just blow up their apartment don't sh- don't don't shoot like poisonous worms in there <laughs> it does seem a little uh over overly thought out it kind of reminds me of silva and skyfall it's like just do it enough with all this weird grand plans <laughs> just do it and then like literally literally Django. i don't entirely disagree i love Django fat i love tomorrow morrison especially right now book yeah. of bubble fat oh yeah, yeah. okay uh, but uh, i love him Possibly. He's the best, but he's also the worst. He's yeah. a terrible bounty hunter. You're right. Not only did he do that, but then when that messes up, he goes, okay, I got to take out Zam before she says anything. Yeah, so I'm going to so kill her. her with, a dart. with a poisonous dart that can only be found on Camino. <laughs> so it's like, oh shit, I guess I gave myself away. Wait, these, like, these specific things are the reason why I don't like Attack of the Clones. Something All that much. Occur- something just occurred to me though, Alex. What? Maybe he wanted Obi-Wan to find him because then how else would the Clone Wars happen if the Jedi never discovered the clones? <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he wanted to be found. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I just thought of that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's true. But, but I mean, he is kind of a shit bounty hunter because he constantly will be like, Obi Wan's like, have you ever been to Coruscant? He's like, it's just like, no, definitely not, never, no. Nope. He goes, yeah. possibly, recently, <laughs> possibly. It's like, stop <laughs> saying, say no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then You're like, trying to cover your tracks here, like it's a definite no. <laughs> oh, I blew up Obi Wan. We don't need to check. <laughs> no, no, dude, dude. The best part is like the Django and Obi Wan fight on Kamino is awesome. But the best yeah, parts yeah. are when Obi Wan just jumps up and like literally just like fucking like kicks Mortal him. Kombat. He's yeah, Johnny Cage. He it's a Mortal Kombat <laughs> kick. Yeah, <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> Obi Wan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so Obi Wan finds out this information from Dex, who's the one of the best characters ever. Dude, okay, he this four armed weirdo has to pull up his pants so his ass crack doesn't show, <laughs> and he's got like a weird little mustache over his alien face, and it just well that depends depends on what Dex, how big your pocketbook is. <laughs> he's the fucking best. Okay, people shit on that diner. Okay, they're like that diner is too I don't, much like Earth. Well, well, honestly, like doesn't all of Coruscant kind of look like Earth? Yeah, and the diner is a great nod to american graffiti and george lucas and yeah, it's all like 50s, 50s america cool. anybody want a cup of java juice <laughs> <laughs> what's the robot name that. i forget i love that i don't remember but i just remember dex's diner was the best hub in a video game of all oh time. yeah the lego, and lego star wars, wars one <laughs> yeah it was awesome i wish they never got rid of it i love I kept that for the original cool. trilogy just been like dex's diner even though it's not in the original trilogy that better be the hub in the skywalker saga I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's really like in those games, there's really like no hub, like main hub world anymore. So uh, that's sad. Yeah. Um, but you know, Dex, I love that. Like, I think that's an inventive. I think seeing that this much more of Coruscant in episode two is well, a big that's what plus. I love. Like, like I love seeing like I've always. This, it's why I kind of defend Canto Bite because I've always wanted to see if there were like planets out there that kind of looked like Earth, you know, or like resembled Earth, or like things happen maybe on these planets that resemble earth but like i like that coruscant's like a blend of like something you would see in blade runner and earth you know yeah definitely blade runner inspired but i liked it because episode one you only see coruscant like the high rises 
Like you don't really the see what's going on. And then in this one, it's like, oh yeah, here's Coruscant on like the street level, and it's shitty. <laughs> There's like sports bars with like pod racing. Yeah, it it's amazing. Uh, you you want to buy some death sticks? Yeah, I don't want any. <laughs> about to go home and rethink my life. That guy needs to show up in the Kenobi show on Disney Plus. <laughs> He's like, you changed my life. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember my brother i remember my brother told me he's like yeah you know what death sticks are i was like no he's like lightsabers i'm like i don't think those are what death, no, sticks, are. death sticks are like drugs man <laughs> <laughs> that's like space heroin <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah i don't know i like I love, seeing I all that the, i love the nod to a new hope though uh in that scene um where uh they're like walking through like the crowd of people and then uh Zam Wessel comes up behind Obi Wan and he, oh, yeah, yeah, whips out his lightsaber, but, chops. Like off with Zam, I always wish that her being, I think he's a she, and I think she's a changeling. I wish her being a changeling, like Matters. actually, like yeah, like she should have been like shape shifting and shit, like throughout, you know? Yeah, but it was just kind of like, oh, they're chasing her. She looks like a woman, and then like she's for a second, she looks weird, and then she looks weird when she dies. Yeah, exactly. Didn't really and, contribute to yeah. her survival. Right. <laughs> when we get to Camino, though, the thing that bothers me is that I feel like there's inf- information that changes or conflicts with what we learn on Camino and then what Obi Wan says later on. So he's he's assigned to go to Camino to investigate this clone army by that was commissioned by Master Sifo-Dyas, whoever the hell that is. Um, and apparently, from Obi Wan tells what's what's that guy's name? Sama Lu or yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Lama Su? Lama Su, yeah, that's it. Lama Su. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lama Su. So he tells Lama Su, he's like, Weirdos. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, Master Sifo Dyas was killed nearly 10 years ago. But then that kind of gets conflicted later on when he's reporting his findings to the council. And he says, Master Sifo Dyas commissioned this clone army nearly 10 years ago. I was under the impression he was killed before then. I was like, so wait a minute. Like, how does that it's make fine. sense? Sifo Diaz didn't do shit. Sifo yeah. Diaz wasn't involved. He got murdered. He got <laughs> killed. As Dooku and Palpatine did this shit. <laughs> okay, because that that's something that's never really clear. Or I've never picked up on. I yeah, only no, just picked up on the Sifo Diaz thing. It's not super obvious, but the implication is that when Django says I was hired by a man named Tyronis, so one of the moons of Bogdan, like Tyronis is Darth Palpatine. Tyronis, Count Dooku, or yeah. Yeah, I should know that. Yeah. Um, so him and presumably Sidious just pretended to be Sifo-Dyas to order these clones. And yeah. then they killed Sifo-Dyas to like get him out of the way. Yeah, that's that's never been clear to me. I always thought that there was like this master named Sifo-Dyas who was killed 10 years ago, but apparently was killed before that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got killed before that apparently. And then they used his name to order the clones I yeah because it's like because every time i watch that i'm like i'm thinking to myself i'm like where the fuck was he on the jedi council 10 years ago <laughs> in episode one was he yaddle <laughs> <laughs> but no it's just this one like i like the obi-wan noir story because i like that camino like you get there and you don't really know what the hell's going on so we're kind of learning with obi-wan like what the hell is this and then yeah. for us we see things that look like stormtroopers and we're like, oh God, that's bad, right? That's really bad. But then, no, the clones turn out to be pretty good for now. Right? Yeah. I mean, and they're all in the back of your mind, you're like, those are stormtroopers. They're all clones of Django Fett. Yes, which I actually like that fact because like Boba and the stormtroopers always had a similar vibe. Yeah. Like, you know, and his initial concept, his suit was the concept for like a super stormtrooper or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like, it's there's a connection there and i like how they made that happen i love I, I love i love the kid though is your father home yep can we speak to him sure boba is your father here yep may we see him sure <laughs> Listen, I didn't need to see Kid Boba Fett, but in the long run, I actually don't mind because I don't what they did with Kid Boba Fett in Clone Wars was fucking amazing. And now it's leading to all sorts of Boba Fett development. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like at the time, I was like, I don't need to see Kid Boba, but I'm like, whatever. I like it. It's cool. Yeah. I like that he's a clone as well. Yeah. But he's just 
not aging quickly. Right. But yeah. what have fooled me, considering Tamar Morrison is super old <laughs> in Mandalorian, even though he's only supposed to be like 40. <laughs> um, That's Aquaman's dad. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't know. Django, I think it was cool to have him as a kid. It was like, like for me, like learning about. Wait, well, I remember. Boba I remember Fett as a dad. Yeah, I, I rem- <laughs> yeah, I remember. Like as a kid, I was like, oh my god, that guy, Jay, that guy, Boba Fett, daddy. Yeah, like <laughs> oh my god, Boba. Boba like, Fett's that cool he, he guy. Got jet packs, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Boba Fett's the cool guy from the original trilogy. He doesn't do anything, and here's Jango, who does way more in one movie, <laughs> but but still manages to be like a shit person, like a, a character who makes shit decisions. Mm-hmm. As we said, worst bounty hunter ever. Bosk would not be happy. <laughs> I like Jango though. I think he's fun. Yeah, he's fun. Um, yeah. I liked getting because in the original trilogy, like you barely saw Boba ever do much, so it was cool seeing like the rocket on his jetpack get used. Like yeah. it was cool. Yeah, and seeing Slave One again. Yeah, come on. Yeah. The seismic charge, the greatest sound effect in Star Wars. Wow. And yeah. when they brought that back in Mando, I was like, ah! <laughs> like I, they were flying it, and I literally stood up and they're being chased. And I said to Casey, like, they, they should use the seismic charge. And then it's like opening up. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, that's why I hate flying. Oh my god! But that asteroid chase is cool. Okay, episode two has got some sick sequences. Okay, the Coruscant chase is fun. The Coruscant chase is fun. The speeders through the city—that's cool. It's traffic. It's it's like a New York City chase, and you got like the Obi Wan fighting in the rain with Django. That's sick. You got uh, the asteroid belt chase with Boa yeah. and Django. With get him, Dad! Get him! Fire! <laughs> you got him! <laughs> I think that's the last but that's uh, but that's all interrupted by the shitty love story. You mean by the amazing across the stars by John Williams? <laughs> the only good the only good yeah. thing to come out of that. Just shift your attention away from the dialogue and focus on the music and it's I will a say, beautiful I will story. Say, I will say though, this once Anakin and Padme get to Tatooine, it significantly improves. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking for Shmi Skywalker. Annie? Lenny? Annie, it is you, a Jedi. What do you know? <laughs> I wish Anakin was like, hey, you were my owner for all those years. Remember that asshole? And he's like, force chokes him. <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah, because at that point, you're shifting away from the love story a bit and you're getting to Anakin. Uh, and it's losing his mom, which is a big which thing for him. I, ha- I have something to mention because he mentioned something at the beginning of the movie where he ha- he has a hard time sleeping because he has like nightmares of his mother. I wish that that was kind of brought up in the Phantom Menace because remember remember in the Phantom Menace like that scene where he tells Padme it's like oh I'm leaving now I don't know if I'm ever going to be coming back. What if like he had told her like it's like I didn't sleep good last night because I had a dream about my mother. Like, what if that had all started in The Phantom Menace? Yeah, you could have seeded it in better. Yeah. I still think Anakin's motivation should have been freeing the slaves. It should have been. Like, you brought... I never <laughs> thought of that until you brought it up. Yeah, that would have been... I think that would have worked better. Um, but just, like, as far as, like, superficial yeah, things in this movie... We got shafted on a stormtrooper revolution and a slave <laughs> revolution. Listen, I'm not saying I'm smarter than George Lucas. I'm just saying <laughs> those things would have been cool. Um... <laughs> But, uh, like, superficial things I like in this movie. I like that Obi-Wan is apparently trying to rock a Qui-Gon Jinn kind of look. That's kind of fun. He's got long hair and a beard. Like, yeah. I, I like that. Um, I like uh, Mace Windu's purple <laughs> wait, 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 lightsaber. Wait, wait. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? Sure. So, of course, being the little gullible eight-year-old that I was, when the teaser poster came out, it had, like, Padme on one side, Anakin on the other. I was just like, oh, yeah, Obi-Wan looks the same that he does in from uh, Phantom Menace, and then and then and <laughs> I was eight years old at the time, but then when he pops up, I was like, when, we, when I saw it, and he pops up in the movie, I was like, is that the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I could have sworn Qui-Gon got stabbed in the last movie. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, I don't see Obi, like, who is this young kid? That looks like Obi-Wan, but I don't see Obi-Wan anywhere. <laughs> oh my god. Um, 
no, but I like that. I think um, that's very cool. Like Obi Wan, I really, I just dig Obi Wan in these movies. Who doesn't? Um, that's why he's getting his own show. But Mace Windu's purple lightsaber, amazing. Okay, <laughs> amazing. I blew well, I, my I've mind. Always, I've always hated the complaint that people make where it's like, he's a, why does he have a purple lightsaber? Lightsaber should be certain colors. I'm like. Who gives a shit? He probably found a rare blue or rare purple, like, yeah. um, what do you call it? Uh, kyber crystal. Yeah. And, he found, and used it and put it in his lightsaber. Yeah, I always thought it was cool. It made him stand out more. I mean, it's Samuel Jackson. He's already a badass. But, like, to have a little extra bit of, like, flair was his awesome. His body is over. <laughs> and I love that. And on the lightsaber hilt is inscribed, like, bad mother ever. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, why wasn't that on my mace windu lightsaber toy <laughs> this party's over i just like that they gave samuel jackson more to do in this movie than to just sit there and be like thank god they gave the no. entire <laughs> jedi order something more to do in this movie master windu how pleasant of you to join us this party's over Brave, but uh, foolish, my old Jedi friend. You're impossibly outnumbered. I don't think so. We'll see. fucking war with the droids i'm like thank god you're getting off your asses and actually doing something about the separatists the coolness of seeing an army of jedi fighting at once which has never been done before yeah. was the coolest shit that is cooler than everything in episode one except for darth maul everything else that is cooler than <laughs> Well, I just, I just love too how it's like you don't know that they're there. Like you think it's only Anakin, Padme, and Obi Wan, and then all of a sudden you just see like Mace Windu walk out. You like you see the feet, and it's like John, 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 and then he just whips out his lightsaber, and Dooku's like Master Windu, this party's over, and then you just see all the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I love some of those people. They have those weird. Yeah, <laughs> that person always. Dude, I've them. always, I've always felt bad for that one dude too. That kind of looks like a pterodactyl who gets like blasted yes. by Django. Yes. Oh my god! I looked up his name once. What is his name? The dinosaur guy. <laughs> um. Oh shit! I'm looking this up. One second. Oh my god. Uh, what should I type? Dinosaur Jedi. Do um, episode two dinosaur guy, or Jedi blasted by um Django. Oh God, I love that guy. What a that guy was Coleman Trevor. That's right, Coleman Col Trevor. What a name! What a legend. Okay, <laughs> that dude what had balls. He's like, you know what? I'm not fighting any droids. I'm gonna fucking take out that Sith who we know is a master. <laughs> well, dude, and Jedi. that's the thing. He like he. It's like he's like on the side of the separatists, but he's like a spy. So he waits to whip out his lightsaber, and then Django's just like, man. <laughs> He like jumped up to kill Dooku and he's like, I'm gonna end this war right fucking now. And then Django's like, no, bitch. And I'm like, no. And and then this is how you, this is how you know Django's cool, even if he is a terrible bounty hunter. He like slings his he slings his uh blaster. You oh, know. he spins it into the holster. Yeah. yeah that's, that's sick. Okay, that's... I gotta ask one thing though. When he gets his head chopped off, wouldn't his head go flying out of the it, it does. I was gonna say, don't you see like a shadow? You see like a shadow. See a shadow. It's real okay. brief. Because but... I, I've always, I was always confused when I was little when like Boba's like picking up the helmet. I'm like, isn't the head gonna fall out? Uh, yeah, no, you, it goes out when he gets his head chopped off. Okay. Yeah, which is, I like that Django dies because his jetpack is broken. <laughs> like he literally, it gets messed up when the, uh, what is it called? The rhino, oh, reek. The rhino when the head. reek. Yeah. Uh, runs all over him and then you see the sparks on the, and he tries to go up right as mace windu slashes him and that's why he dies and just like boba dies in episode six because his jetpack gets hit and then he goes flying boba so, where? <laughs> <laughs> so i like that that was cool but like i mean even just back to the sequences so you also got the coliseum which is cool to see yeah, in a star wars movie awesome. You get the you get like multiple parts of that Coliseum fight. You get like 
the monsters attacking with the freaky weird rat thing that like tries to like that like cuts Padme just enough so she gets like a belly showing. Like, how does that work? <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is, I, every time I watch that scene, I'm like, I don't think closed hair like that. <laughs> and then uh, you get, you know, you have the spider uh, thing that's like, oh! <laughs> yeah, it makes that weird. When Obi Wan chops that thing's leg off one by one, that's satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I love, I love when, I love when like, and like. Cause they're going out there to be executed. So like Obi-Wan's like already out there. And after the really terrible dialogue between Padme and um, Anakin, they finally get out there and like, and Obi-Wan's like, so what was your plan? We were doing this and this, and then we decided to come rescue. I love how Obi-Wan's just like, good job. <laughs> yeah. Like, great. You guys are captured. Too. Yeah. You, you, but, you were successful. Yeah. We're, we're getting out of this guys. <laughs> it's just funny. Cause like that, that sequence is good. And then you get the Jedi show up and it gets crazy. Kip Fisto wait, wait. smiling. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you call that whole Geonosian Geonosian battle dip, a diplomatic solution or aggressive negotiations? Called aggressive negotiation i actually like that line okay maybe <laughs> but, i'm a sucker yeah. i like that line <laughs> one of the more underrated parts of this uh of this geonosian battle is c-3po's head attached to a droid body <laughs> it's Listen, stupid but it's funny is is the droid factory whole action sequence I don't a waste like of time yeah. probably I don't but watch that sequence. It leads to that. So it's yeah. all worth it. <laughs> die, yeah. Jedi, die. Oh, well, dude, like you, you can you can tell that like George Lucas wrote that scene on the fly, and you can tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they literally were like, we need another action sequence here. Uh, let's quickly come up with something in Trevis. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, well, they'll run on a treadmill and they'll <laughs> get, things will fall around them and shit. Like it's very clear. That means gonna be Aiden stuck in a Natalie's, bucket full of molten fire. <laughs> Aiden and Natalie's just running around a blue screen, like, oh, oh, oh god. Oh, 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 oh. But you know, I actually like it though. <laughs> I think it's fun. Uh, it's got weird little moments. It's okay. R2 flying around like a boss. Come on. Yeah, yeah. R2's cool in it. But it's just like Anakin Anakin kind of sucks in that because he like he slips and he gets fallen down and then his arm gets like uh like welded. Clamped. Yeah, yeah, clamped and like welded. And then he goes to take out his lightsaber. His lightsaber gets chopped in half. And I'm, he's like, Obi-Wan's uh, gonna kill me. I'm like, has this gonna happened kill. before to him? Uh, I mean, I think it's just because the whole, this weapon is your life. Yes, Master. I'm sorry, Master. <laughs> Obi-Wan's jealous. He's holding me back. When we um, pass the salami, he doesn't respect me. But, like, um, so you go from the, the Jedi army scene, which is cool, to then, like, well, super dude, battle here's, droids. Here's, here's, here's how you know that this battle is going to be an absolute, like, badass fest. When, um... When Django like shoots uh, Mace with like the fire coming out of his uh, blaster, and it touches his cloak, and then and then Mace does the backflip onto the battlefield. He just takes it off like a boss. He's like, <laughs> and then out come the droids, and they just take out like five Jedi all at once. <laughs> yeah, and then it leads to the clone army showing up, and that's cool. Aim right above the fuel tanks. <laughs> you have that whole sequence, and then you have the battle in the desert with the, the sand everywhere. That part's kind of cool. And then and you get to... the lightsaber fight. Yeah, the disappointing lightsaber fight. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Duel of the Fates is a tough one to follow up. I'll give them that. Yeah. That is a tough act. To it follow. was like, I don't know. It was like Fox said, like, George, that was a little bit too clean and too choreographed. We need something a little, like, shorter and slower and more realistic. But what it comes across as is just a light show for the kids at home. So the OP1 in Dooku Park, it's not great, but it's, like, passable. The thing, the thing yeah. that kills it for me, though, I don't know if it's the editing, but, like, I feel like the injuries that Obi-Wan and Anakin sustain they caught like they don't do anything to prevent it like they let it happen to them like because dooku is a master duelist <laughs> I was, well i was gonna say like i feel like because obi-wan's got his blade locked with dooku and then he just gets slashed twice i'm like wow this is the same dude that took out darth maul Listen, he was younger. He was spryer. <laughs> he, he didn't have the high ground. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, you get to Dooku uh, versus yeah. Anakin. Uh, and it could have been awesome. Dude, it's especially so when he gets the two lightsabers. The, the two, that, like, three seconds of two lightsaber, dual lightsaber, we'd never seen that before either. No, and then, that and was then immediately cool. the green one gets chopped in half. 
Yep. And then, and then it goes into and then Anakin's about- like Anakin's like, okay, I'm well, hold on. He's like, I'm gonna cut the power. And then all of a sudden it goes from like a lightsaber fight to them just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was a weird choice. Because you would think if you turn off the power, it would make it easier for the stunt man to have a cool fight without being you know christopher lee yeah so like you could have had them fighting in the dark you're like, telling me looked, that wasn't christopher lee it could have looked really cool that was and christopher instead, lee i am a firm focused, believer at 80 years old he was doing his own stunts they focused on close-ups which is like a weird choice especially when the close-ups don't even look like they're like clashing blades yeah. it just looks like they're like well dude like, in a like that's the thing like know. that's the thing like i feel like all of that in the phantom menace feels more like it's more put together in the phantom menace than it is in attack of the clones like it's just those little things are what put attack of the clones down below it for me even yeah. though okay. even though it's the got a better fight in phantom menace is amazing but yeah okay yeah. i will take i will take one interruption of a clone trooper being like pad are you okay <laughs> then 50 interruptions of Oh, oh my god, stop! He's just a decoy! Like, no! <laughs> fucking no! Like, that, that kills the momentum of Duel of the Fates. Well, okay. and, and, well, when we get to Revenge of the Sith, we'll talk about it. At least in Revenge of the Sith, the lightsaber fight gets interrupted by another lightsaber fight. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, like, so yeah, the Anakin fight turns out into a bit of a letdown, Dude. and he gets his arm chopped off. Which well, I Again, like. I think he lets it happen, <laughs> and it, I think it's just the way it's edited, because, like, right as it's, like, ha- like he just he just has his arm out like that. Listen, Dooku is a master duelist. <laughs> he just makes it look easy. They couldn't react because he's too quick. Christopher Lee's too quick. <laughs> and, then, and then enter Yoda. <laughs> Listen, okay. People this is a point of contention for people. People can bitch and moan that, oh, Yoda's old. The whole point of Yoda is he doesn't need to use a lightsaber. He, the size he's matters a Jedi, that. though. Listen. Obi-Wan says a lightsaber, a weapon of a Jedi knight. Yoda, last time I checked, was a goddamn Jedi. So, of course, he would have a lightsaber. Does he need one? Now, he could kick ass without one, probably. But the fact I, as a, what were we, eight years old, maybe, as an eight-year-old kid, got to sit in the theater and I was was so pissed as an eight-year-old kid. You know why? Because this little weasel... The same little weasel kid that told me episode three was going to be called Access to the Dark Side and it wasn't going to be called anything else told me Yoda's lightsaber was going to be yellow. So when I was an eight-year-old kid in the theater and he whips out a green one, I was like, balls, I'm out. (laughs) I was freaking out. That moment where it's just... It's clear this cannot be decided by our knowledge of the force, but by our skills with a lightsaber. Like, that is the stuff of legend. Oh, okay. And then he's like, he just like swings it. He's like, no. Oh, and then all of a sudden, it's like Yoda's like, just uses yeah. the force to whip his, his out. His cute little hilt. But this is, this is the good part of the lightsaber fight because everybody's just like, yeah, Yoda shouldn't be fighting with a lightsaber. I'm like, yeah, but like at the same time though, isn't it awesome just seeing like 875 year old Yoda doing like front flips and back flips and spinning all over the place? Yeah, like he can get hit. He's so small. Especially, I love the fact that when he's done fighting, he immediately calls his cane back over and starts hobbling again. I'm like, he can only do it in short little bursts because the force. Okay, like, he, but he's still an old man. But we get this amazing little moment, which as a kid, I was like, hell yes. Dude, hell what, yes. what makes it even better is he's not only just like flipping around and like spinning. He's also going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they had a chance because uh, thankfully, like we talked about last time, in the original version of episode one, he was a creepy, weird puppet. Yeah, and in this was movie, it was, the first time, it was the first time Yoda was a CGI, fully CGI character. Because, because they, they could really have him have fights. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was cool. Like I was just like, I'm, I'm on board with it. I think he should have a lightsaber. Palpatine, yeah. I'm cool with having a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. It, like saying Yoda shouldn't have a lightsaber is like saying Palpatine shouldn't have a lightsaber. Yeah. And I mean, in the original trilogy, they didn't need lightsabers. Yoda was in hiding. Palpatine ruled the galaxy. He didn't need to do shit unless he yeah, wanted he could to. Just, he, could just, he could just use his puppets to do it. <laughs> the, only, the only thing Palpatine has to do is just zap himself. Yeah, exactly. That's what he does. <laughs> In true Palpatine fashion. <laughs> but no, I like Yoda fighting. I've, I've always, and, I've, I've always loved that moment too. Like after, uh, after he has like the little like force battle with Dooku, where he just puts his arms out. He's like, 
He's like, yeah, let's fucking go, buddy. <laughs> also, I mean, I always liked uh, Dooku in general as a concept. I just think he's not really used enough in the movies. Yeah. Like, Christopher the- Lee is a legend. Perfect yeah. choice. I get it. He's George is going for, like, a reverse kind of Obi-Wan Allen Guinness, where it's like, oh, it's an older wiser jedi who gets turned on the dark side so it doesn't matter how old you are you can be turned like i like that i like that he's aristocratic and he's classy and he fights with that sick curved hilt i like all that he's like and then they just don't really use him much so it kind of leads into the what we were saying last time where maybe he should have been a separate character and darth maul could have been that character like that or it should have just been one of those characters throughout all three movies right but yeah, I like Dooku overall. I Until Anakin takes them out in the third one. You he's know. classy. Yeah. <laughs> the Trade Federation returns. Briefly. And they actually have one great line. Jango, do, do something. Shoot her or something. <laughs> 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 I love that. Um, and like what you were saying, the Separatist Council, you got my boy Poggle the Lesser. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah well and then, and then the council scene too like as they all leave like you you briefly see like the plans for the death star yeah i like the techno union guy from watt tambor <laughs> the, <techno union. laughs> the um, banking clan will sign your treaty <laughs> um i like the idea of dooku being the head of the separatists i just kind of wish we saw his rise to power as like the separatist leader yeah they should they definitely could have done more with Dooku. Yeah. I do love his scene with Obi Wan when Obi Wan's captain. Yeah, he's he's essentially saying it's like you know this whole separatist plot. Like your old buddy Qui Gon, he would have joined me, and then yeah. Obi Wan and Obi Wan's firing back. He's like, no, he wouldn't. He's like, yes, he would. Yeah, I like that scene, and I think I think Dooku really is trying to turn Obi Wan. Yeah, because in typical Sith fashion. I'm sure Dooku at that moment is still planning on betraying Palpatine at some point in the future and yeah. wants to have an apprentice of his own. Like, that's kind of like the Sith thing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I like that. And I, it's, I like that, in a way, Dooku is like Obi-Wan's, like, grandpa in a way <laughs> <laughs> because he was Qui-Gon's master. Yeah. Um, like, I like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just... I don't know, episode two for me, man. I just, I like the plot more than episode one. I, Epi- I agree there. One. I agree there. There's just things that I think conflict within the plot, like information that we're given that's said later that's like, wait, we're, you just said that like 10 minutes ago. And then the whole love story just brings it down, man. Oof. Uh, it's just, it comes dialogue. out to me. Oof. Do I prefer the love story or do I prefer trade disputes? I, mean, I prefer the love story. <laughs> I mean, I do too, but at the same time, it's just like it, it's I like the dialogue's just so bad and ham fisted. Like George, George couldn't write dialogue, you know. Uh, yeah, he should have had someone else take a pass at all these movies for sure. Yeah, um, but like, but he's George Lucas. He has an unlimited budget and doesn't need a boss. I also don't think Duel of the Fates should have been on the speeder bike scene. <laughs> no, that didn't make sense to me. <laughs> It was weird. It was a weird choice. But I do like seeing Anakin like looking all over the desert talking to Jawas and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, Where's my mother? <laughs> or what's his name was playing Owen Lars? Um, Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Exactly. He's coming exactly. back he was... in Kenobi. Huh? Isn't he coming back in Obi-Wan? I think so. I think he's coming I'm gonna, back. I'm going to check it out right now. I think so, though. That'd be amazing. I hope that's, I hope that's true. I feel like I heard that. Yeah, let's see. Yep, he is. Oh yeah. Yep. Is Death Sticks guy coming back? <laughs> he better be. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. Episode two, it is definitely not a great movie, but I enjoy that it feels more important to the overall development of the universe. Like this does set up the Clone Wars. Like it does start anakin's descent towards being vader yeah like it does more for the story to me which i think is makes it easier to hold my interest than like episode one feels so disconnected from like a lot of it and despite having an amazing pod race and a really amazing lightsaber fight the rest of the movie just always felt kind of like for episode two 
I can like find more I enjoy in episode two. Like the scene with Yoda and the younglings, like truly younglings. the mind younglings. of a child. <laughs> like I love that. Like Master Yoda, perhaps they like, erase it from the archive memory. <laughs> Lost the planet, Master Kenobi has. Yeah, oh, embarrassing. Yeah, like that was awesome. Seeing like a more like playful Yoda again. Uh, the one yeah. atrocious scene of CGI in this movie, which can't ever be unseen, is that blue screen talk where Obi Wan, Mace, and Yoda are walking in the Jedi halls, and it literally, if you look uh, in the background, it's just flat. <laughs> it's so <laughs> flat and terrible. And I'm like, oh god, yeah. oh no. And that's kind of another thing for me too. Like, I think like we we know the prequels are famous for the CGI. Yeah. But I think the CGI is worse than it was in Phantom Menace. They definitely use it more. It's like Phantom Menace has a lot of CGI, but it also has a lot of like model shots yeah. and like, you know, practical stuff. Also, but, another yeah. thing that I hate, as much as I have warmed up to Jar Jar, I hate that he's basically responsible for the downfall of the Jedi. <laughs> Yeah, me so propose emergency power to the supreme chancellor. <laughs> which like, brings, me, which brings me to you've doomed us all. <laughs> which brings me to a point that I didn't mention last video. Do you think the original plan? Do you buy into this theory that Jar Jar was supposed to be a Sith Lord? God, I hope so. <laughs> I think that's an amazing twist. It if is. That was I mean. True, that would have I mean, been amazing. The more the more videos that I've watched on it, the more like I'm a firm believer that that it was supposed to be that. That would have been so cool. Because like <laughs> especially especially that scene in Phantom Menace where um, Padme's like, "Are you sure about this? The Queen wouldn't approve. I don't approve." And then she sits down, but then you see like Jar Jar right behind behind her, like mouthing what she said. Oh God! He was like a mind trick. <laughs> so I'm like, I mean, that would be cool. I. That would have been a great twist. Like, especially if it was like all of a sudden Jar Jar starts speaking like normally. Yeah. And his whole like, thing was just well, like that, that's the whole theory. Rude. Cause everybody's like, what if Jar Jar's just acting dumb on purpose? Yeah, like that would have been and he's his luck isn't actually luck. Yeah. He's like literally force. like yeah, using, using the, force. the force to like alter things around him. Like that would yeah. that would have been sick. God damn. <laughs> yeah. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Like um, I kind of buy into it, honestly. Like, uh, I think the evidence is there if you watch, like, any, like, YouTube video. That's the one fan theory in Star Wars I buy into. All the rest of them, fuck off. But... <laughs> Snoke is playing us. Snoke is playing us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. That would have been cool. But I actually like that they cut Jar Jar back in the movie, though. That was nice of them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'll be... Obi, it is wonderful to see you, my friend. You too, Jaja. Not really. <laughs> Obi Wan's like, no, fuck. No, I <laughs> cry <you> again. Why? <laughs> Bad memories um, with you. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just, I think this episode two, despite you know the flaws we've talked about, I just think it, it's it feels more Star Warsy to me in general, but also does new stuff with Star Wars where it's like it doesn't end with like ships needing to blow up a central command death star-ish type thing oh like, wait so you're telling me this was the last jedi before the last jedi no because <laughs> <laughs> this didn't have canto bike <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know i just think episode two for me and maybe it's nostalgia because like i we talked about we grew up with these movies Episode two was literally the first DVD I ever like I ever bought for myself. I hated when, you back in the day because you would always be like, you would always call me and be like, I got the episode two DVD. I was like, I gotta wait till Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> like you, I bought it from Video Zone when it was <laughs> I bet you rented it TV. like sixty eight hundred times. No, I just shot uh, bought it. Oh. Like they had, they had like uh, the rentals in most of the shows, but on the front desk there'd be like new releases that you could buy. And there was episode two. And I was like, I'm buying that. Yeah. And you know what? I think episode two gets too much hate. I think it gets too much hate. I, I, I think, I don't know. People are coming around, though. I can sense it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know I don't if know. I'll ever I, get there. I think what, one of my favorite things about the movie, too, is that episode one has this feeling of like, like, oh, Discovery, and there's this kid, and it's fun, because there's this kid, whoa, like that, like there's this kid. And episode two, 
this is when the feeling of dread kind of starts to happen, where you start to feel like this isn't going to end well. Like th this is going towards something very bad. And you get that whole feeling throughout the movie that like there's something hop happening that we're not fully aware of that is going to screw everyone over. Be gone. Well done, has. Lord Tyrannus. Yeah, like there's just creepy. You know, there's a sense that something bad. Even the last shot with the wedding, the genius of Across the Stars is that it's it not is, only romantic, it's, it's tragic. sad and tragic. And yeah. it feels like even though you're supposed to be happy they're getting married, you know this is a bad decision and you know it's going to lead to something's awful. So yeah. I don't know. It's. I like the feeling of dread this movie gives where it's it's not as fun as episode one. Like it doesn't have a Jar Jar type character. Like yeah. it's much more noir, serious, like yeah. sometimes stupid dialogue. But in general, Most it's like of the time. To be more. Also, like we need to discuss the fact that the Geonosians coming out of that wall was scary as shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, what? <laughs> I can't hate the droid factory scene because it gave us that. That's terrifying. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't hate episode two. I prefer, like I said, I prefer it to episode one. Uh, I definitely prefer, I think episode one is like out of here. Episode two is like I like a here. And episode three is like I like a here. Yeah, episode three is just like, yeah, it's better than both of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, move aside, guys. War! <laughs> War! <laughs> yeah. Plus, episode two gave us not one, but two Clone War shows. <laughs> <laughs> that fixed Anakin, which you shouldn't need fixing in a TV show. Yeah. But retroactively, if it makes it better, yeah. go for it. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, yeah. yeah, me personally, I still don't like this movie, but for there was like a time where I was like, nope, it, I don't, I don't like it as a Star Wars movie. It's not part of canon, at least in my <laughs> head. And then, oh my god! And then, and then, like, I slowly came around to being like, you know what? I saw like I saw this at a birthday party in the theaters. Like, yeah, it's it's a bit nostalgic, even though I think it's a terrible movie. I could still watch it as a Star Wars movie. Mm. That's the thing. I'm like, you know, it's it's a bad movie, and it's if it was if it didn't have the Star Wars name on it, it would be a bad movie. But slapping the Star Wars name on it makes it a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. it's still at the very bottom for me. Yeah, yeah, I would put this, you know, like it's above Phantom Menace, but yeah. plus Phantom Menace doesn't have Django. <laughs> It's true, but it does it does have uh, more new gun ray though. This is getting out of hand. Now the one plus. That is <laughs> not a plus. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, when we when we get to Revenge of the Sith and Anakin just wipes those guys out, it that had to be like the most satisfying moment of the prequel trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Sidious promised us peace. We only want to do. Ah! <laughs> I can't wait to talk about Ian McDiarmid with a lightsaber too in the next part. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know what's interesting about Ian McDiarmid about this movie? So you can tell that in this movie they were setting up that Palpatine's disfigurement and sunken face and all that was going to be like a natural thing because <laughs> in this movie he suddenly looks old as hell yeah did you or sickly like episode two palpatine looks sickly and maybe, like maybe ian mcdiarmid was briefly sick i don't know i don't i think i think it was they were setting up that his his appearance was something gradual that happened over time instead he but, just zaps himself with lightning because then he looks like young again in episode three you know like but you just looked like really old in episode two like <laughs> look at it side by side it's crazy yeah i'll pull this up right now <laughs> Yeah, look at Duke Palpatine episode two. He looks old. Let's see. Do it. <laughs> uh, that's him in episode. Oh, I, I typed in Palatine, so something else is coming up. Palpatine episode two. Especially yeah, he looks like, like the. He looks like a skeleton. Yeah. Yeah, like in the Senate, especially, he looks old and sick. Yeah. 
So I think they were going to like gradually build that up. And instead, George was like, no, we're going to have lightning bolts at his face. <laughs> we're just going to have him zap himself. <laughs> In true Palpatine fad. I, I keep bringing that up. Anytime he uses the force light, anytime Palpatine uses force lightning, you know he's going to zap himself. It literally backfires on him. <laughs> <laughs> so that concludes this episode of Remembering the Prequel Trilogy. Pat, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at this Pat guy. Um, I'm excited for all the Star Wars content we're probably going to be getting soon or announcements. I, re- I already know all the bitching from the fan bases, but the last, the last time Obi-Wan and Darth Vader met, it was, well, I left you. I was about to learn it, but I am the master. That means nothing now. I already know there's going to be bitching about that. Listen, I, I don't want them to meet again in the Obi-Wan show. Yeah. I, I don't want them to see each other. I yeah. really hope they don't. But I think it's going to we'll happen. Because they yeah, already said, was... I think they're going to rematch. But like, it, it takes away from Revenge of the Sith. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want that. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> it's all it. Obi Wan's fault. He's holding you back. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at my official website, alexmaddenmovies.mystrikingly.com. All my social media links are there. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the movies somewhere. Tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Stop!